I am speaking to you from the cabinet room at 10 Downing Street. This morning, the British ambassador in Berlin handed the German government a final note stating that unless we heard from them by 11 o'clock, that they were prepared at once to withdraw their troops from Poland, a state of war would exist between us. I have to tell you now that no such undertaking has been received and that consequently this country is at war with Germany. On 7th of September 1940, Britain feels the Luftwaffe's first bomb hit the ground. Air raid sirens, dark damp nights in tube stations and rationing all become second nature as Hitler's bombs never seem to waver. At the time, the Nazis were trying to break the will of Britons, but underestimated the resolve of the British people, with many playing a vital role in keeping morale high. Welcome to Take a Seat. Get comfortable and join me and my channel in exploring some of the fascinating lives, interesting history and notable periods in how the world was shaped into what we know now. This video will be in a series looking at figures who in one way or another inspired the British public to hold against the Nazis during the Blitz. In this first ever episode we're going to dive into the extraordinary world of black band leader and dancer Ken Snakehips Johnson, a gentle entertainer who grew to fame loved by many despite harsh adversity faced by black people during this time and whose life regrettably ended far too early. On 10th of September 1914, Kenrick Reginald Hitchmans Johnson was born in the city of Georgetown in what's now Guana, then British Guana. His parents were both medical professionals. His father, Reginald, was a doctor and minister of health for the country while his mother, Anna, was a nurse. Johnson seemed to have music in his genes though. He was in a band at Queen's College where he loved to dance and play the violin, but his father disapproved who felt, not surprisingly, a career in medicine would suit better. And so, to give Ken a British education, at the age of 14 he set sail across the North Atlantic Ocean on the SS Nickery, arriving in Plymouth on the 31st of August 1929. The grammar school Johnson attended was the Sir William Borlase's Grammar School, referred as Borlase, where he excelled academically as well as athletically, playing cricket and football, and most likely due to his extraordinary height at 6 foot 4, he was an amazing goalkeeper. His love of music and dancing didn't wane, however. Ken left Borlase in 1931, and there is contradictory information on whether he began a law degree at London University or went to Edinburgh University to study medicine. There are no records of either. It is known, however, that studies were dropped as he pursued dancing as a career and took his influence from Buddy Bradley. Ken Johnson, through Buddy Bradley, was recorded for the film Old Daddy. If you're with me on YouTube, you'll see the footage, which is believed to be the only known available video of Ken Johnson, which was released in 1935. Just prior to the release of the film, Johnson taught the Caribbean as a dancer before visiting Harlem, New York, where his time was spent honing his tap dancing skills by studying styles from local African American peers. It was here his nickname Snake Hips was earned, according to Val Wilmer, photographer and writer specializing in jazz and blues. As Wilmer put it, this is where he learned to wind his hips in the suggestive manner that his nickname implied. One of Johnson's peers was Fletcher Henderson, a band leader and pianist in New York who encouraged Johnson in future band leading and even handed over the conducting stick to his own orchestra. This was until early 1936 when Ken returned to Britain. Full of new skills and motivation, he joined up with Leslie Thompson, a Jamaican trumpeter, to form the band Aristocrats of Jazz, or also known as the Emperors of Jazz or Jamaican Emperors. Thompson led the band and described Ken as a stick waggler. he was no musician, which in truth was the consensus among his fellow musicians and band colleagues, but undeterred, Ken mastered his art while basing his style from the famous scat artist and entertainer Cab Calloway. The band's notoriety grew quickly, going from their first performances in April 1936 in cinemas the aristocrats of jazz were recruited on a six-week trial basis by the old Florida club in Mayfair towards the end of the very same year. 
Johnson, Thompson and the band enjoyed great success, but for some reason there wasn't full agreement among them. This is shown when Ken Johnson renegotiates the contract with the old Florida club that left Leslie Thompson's name off of it. As you would expect, Thompson left, and so Leslie Jiver Hutchinson, a Jamaican trumpeter already in the band, became leader, and Ken Snakesips Johnson and his West Indian orchestra was born. The band recorded Goodbye and Remember through Parlophone Records on the 4th of February 1938, but it was rejected and never released or issued. Despite this, Johnson and the band were soon scouted by BBC's head of music, Leslie Perrone, at the Shepherd's Bush Empire. As a quick side note, it is not brushed past me at how popular the name Leslie was at the time. The scouting led to their first radio broadcast on the 7th of April 1938, and many more would follow. Ken even started to make plans for a tour in Scandinavia and the Netherlands, alongside attending the 1939 New York's World Fair, but these plans were derailed by the start of the war. Instead, Johnson and his West Indian Orchestra took up a new residence at Willoughby's, but this was short-lived due to the threat of bombing and licenses being removed, and so they took up residence at the nightclub Café de Paris. The Café de Paris in Coventry Street, modelled from the Titanic, was one of very few clubs allowed to remain open during the war. This was because it was underground, underneath the Rialto cinema and didn't give off any light which was necessary for blackouts during nights of Luftwaffe's bombing raids. The band's popularity rose as the club was equipped with BBC broadcasting capabilities and the members of the orchestra were not up for conscription while other musicians had been. Notably, the Café de Paris lowered its prices, became less socially exclusive and was seen as a safe haven during the hard times. The club's manager advertised it as the safest and gayest restaurant in town, even in air raids, 20 feet below ground. This, however, was not strictly true, as although it was underneath the cinema, the only thing between the club ceiling was the glass roof of the Rialto. Still, Johnson continued with his success, and in 1940, Ken met and began a relationship with memoirist and critic Gerald Hamilton, where they would reside in a cottage in Berkshire along the banks of the River Thames. Although not a massive amount is known of the relationship as it wasn't until the early 2010s Johnson's sexuality was uncovered, it is known that the relationship between him and Hamilton was real despite the age gap of about 20 years. On the 8th of March 1941 there was heavy bombing over London. Ken drank with friends at the Embassy Club, which was near the Café de Paris, and Johnson was due to stop at 9.45. Determined, during the blackout with no cabs available, Ken Johnson ran to the Café de Paris when the band started their signature song, Old Johnny, when at least two bombs hit the building, one penetrating the glass roof of the Rialto and hitting the ceiling of the club directly. Ken Snake Hips Johnson was killed instantly, along with Baba Williams, the band's saxophonist, and at least 32 others with many more injured. Gerald Hamilton was called by the police and was asked to identify Johnson's body at the Westminster's mortuary. Hamilton was devastated and always travelled from that point on with a framed photo of Ken. The funeral was on the 14th of March 1941 at the Golders Green Crematorium and his ashes were placed in the Borlaces Grammar School Chapel on the 8th of March 1942 after a memorial service on the year anniversary of the tragedy. Ken Snake Hips Johnson and his West Indian Orchestra's legacy will live on. Not only did he and they entertain Britain, a distraction from the war and honed a free space to let loose, but Johnson and the band introduced Swing to Britain, along with an all-black outfit which pushed a radical change within society and racial integration. Thanks for taking a seat. Whether you're with me on YouTube or through the podcast, please consider liking and subscribing and maybe leave a comment with ideas on who you would like to hear about and what your thoughts are of the video. See description for links to sources and resources to learn more about this topic and for more content check out the channel where I hope to see you again very soon.